Fonia gangrene was first described by Jean Arfred Fonia. Fonia gangrene is defined as a polymicropy rapidly progressing necrotizing facilities of the perineal, periano, and genital areas of the males. A gangrene is a local death of soft tissues due to a disease or an injury, and this dead tissue is always colonized by bacteria. Gangrene can be divided into two types that is, the non infected gangrene or a dry gangrene and uninfected or wet gangrene. There are a number of subdivisions of gangrene that include a clostridium cellulites, clostridium myonecrosis, and necrotizing facilities. Therefore, fonia gangrene is one of the subdivisions of a gangrene known as necrotizing facilities of the male genitalia. There are two types of this fonia gangrene. Type 1 is due to a mixture of aerobic and anaerobic organisms usually following an abdominal operation or associated with diabetes mellitus. And the second type is due to group A streptococcus synergies with a second organism such as Staphylococcus aureus or coliforms and bacterial species. There are two main pathways for spreading. First is from the gastrointestinal tract from an anorectal region of the surgical treatment of hemorrhoids, stroma of the rectum. And the second pathway is from the urogenital tract, after prolonged use of urinary catheters, periuretritis, and instrumental dilatation of stenosis of the urethra. The pathogenesis for this fonia gangrene involves a localized infection or an injury that's adjacent in the port of entry, then the microorganisms infiltrate the area producing the enzymes which cause coagulation of nutrient vessels. The thrombosis of these vessels reduce local blood supply and the tissue oxygen tension falls. Then the resultant tissue hypoxia allows growth of facultative anaerobes and microphilic organisms in the blood. And the microorganisms then produce enzymes such as collagenase and lectinase which lead to digestion of the fascia barriers. The fascia necrosis and digestion then extends the infection along the fascia planes. And this infection advances through the genital fascia known as the back and dados fascia, the perineal fascia, which is the colles fascia, as well as the fascia of the abdominal wall known as kappa fascia in all directions and can even reach up to the level of the armpit. The infection is shared under normal looking skin. Most common causative microorganisms include the Escherichia coli. Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Streptococcus prithridis or Streptococcus species, Staphylococcus species, Calypsiera, and several anaerobic bacteria such as the bacteroids, Clostridium buffringens, and Bacillus fragilis, Gallic enterobacteria, and fungi are involved. Fonia gangrene begins with a prodromal period of genital discomforts and pruritus which followed by sudden onset of the perineal pain. As the gangrene progresses, this pain is replaced by anesthesia due to destruction of the nerve endings on the skin. Initially, the skin appears normal and the extent of subdermal damage may not be apparent. This is important because it may delay diagnosis as the infection is centered at the fascia level. The progression through the fascia layers results in deep tissue necrosis and gangrenous skin changes, which result in the drainage of the affected area and demarcation between the viable and the dead tissue. A byproduct of anaerobic metabolism is the formation of crepitus, which is composed of hydrogen, hydrogen sulfide, nitrogen, and nitrous oxide, which may be detected on X ray, thus indicating the presence of a dead tissue which is associated with a false odor. There is a rapid development of severe toxemia, which is associated with signs of pyrexia with or without hypothermia, leukocytosis, thrombocytopenia, raised blood urea and nitrogen, tachycardia, hypotension, and reduced urine output. This may occur in just a few hours, progressing to an organ failure and death. The causes of this phonius gangrene are related to poor hygiene. Usually it's due to a less aggressive or more routine infectious process through some point of entry involving the colon, urinary tracts and prostate or anorectal area. It can also proceed from cellulitis or traumatic injury involving the cutaneous structures of the perianal region. Obstetric events such as vaginal deliveries, sweet, 
epithelomids and cesarean section, and carcinoma of the large intestine, together with hematological malignancies, severe neutropenia can lead to this phonus gangrene. The predisposing factors for development of phonus gangrene include a poor perfusion, hypertension, renal insufficiency, trauma, diabetes mellitus, malnutrition, immune suppression, cigarette smoking, and intravenous drug abuses, obesity, and spinal cord injury. The diagnosis of phonus gangrene is usually clinical, and the differential diagnosis will include cellulitis, belenitis, ochitis, epididymitis, torsion, strangulated hernia, and benign scrotal edema, and a full blood count will reveal anemia and leukocytosis. Renal profile is impaired with high urea and creating a secondary to the septic shock. Cardiopathy secondary to sepsis may also be seen. A midstream urine sample is taken to exclude a urinary tract infection. An intravenous pyelogram or barium enema, sigmoidoscopy or cystoscopy can be used in your diagnosis. The tissue biopsies and pass are sent for culture and sensitivity tests to detect the gas producing microorganisms. A frozen section is usually helpful in visualizing soft tissue necrosis and dense infiltration of the involved area with a cold morphonucleoside. An MRI will show edema but it's not necessary for your diagnosis. The treatment of phonus gangrene involves a surgical emergency which needs radical debridement, aggressively removing all the necrotic tissue and marginally perfused tissue. Debridement should be continued until all the remaining tissues are adherent and viable. As a rule, the penis, testes and bladder together with the rectum are spared if possible. Intravenous blood spectrum antibiotics such as vancomycin Clindamycin, metronidazole, ampicillin, salbactam, gendamycin are the most commonly used together with analgesic. Empirical therapy is given initially before it can be identified on the basis of culture and sensitivity tests. And the patient's results should be reviewed daily and creatinine phosphokinase levels should be evaluated to monitor for myelin necrosis. And enteral nutrition together with normal general nutrition should be maintained. They won't close later with skin grafting to restore function quickly and provide good cosmetic outcome. And the resultant scar may also predispose these individuals to development of squamous cell carcinoma after long life of period.